Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q1 FY22 earnings conference call of EPL Limited, hosted by Systematic Institutional Equities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vipul Sangri from Systematic Institutional Equity. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Rutuja. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Systematics, uh, I welcome you all uh, to EPL. Uh, Q1 FY22 earnings call. From the management team, uh, I'll quickly introduce them. Uh, we have Mr. Sudanshu Watts, Indian CEO, uh, Mr. Ramaswamy, CEO, Mr. Parak Shah, CFO, Mr. Amit Jain, Senior VP Corporate Finance, Mr. Uh, Suresh Savalia, Head Legal and Company Secretary, and Mr. Deepak Ganju, uh, Regional VP for Amisa Region. Uh, I will hand over the call uh, to Sudanshu for his opening remarks and post that uh, we can open the call for Q&A. Over to you, Sudanshu. Thank you, Vipul. Um, and uh, uh, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, on the call. Uh, 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 it is indeed my pleasure to welcome you all uh, to quarter one FY22 EPL uh, you know, earnings call. Uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for waiting uh, for a couple of minutes because some of your colleagues were joining in. So uh, let me start by, uh, you know, uh, sharing with you our, our quarter one FY22 results. As the board and management team of the company, we are very satisfied with the progress which we have made in quarter one. With, uh, in, in, under the given circumstances. Let me start by sharing with you uh, our mission once again, so EPL 2.0 mission. This is, we are basically committed to delivering market-leading revenue growth, and we've defined this as double-digit growth year on year. And at the same time, we stay committed to delivering capital-efficient, consistent earnings growth. Against that backdrop, let me once again share with you the performance of EPL in quarter one. Uh, we are very satisfied with the performance we've delivered, and under the given circumstances, these are a very good set of numbers. Let me share with you the revenue growth. So on a pro forma basis, we've delivered 12.8% revenue growth. When I say pro forma basis, as some of you will remember, we have shut down our Russia manufacturing operations, which was in the base last year. And also, we had opened up a new category called hand sanitizer, which was in our base in quarter one FY21. So when we talk of 12.8% growth consolidated for EPL in, in, in quarter one, we are taking out the number, we are basically knocked off the numbers which are there for Russia manufacturing operations, so the Russia number, because we've stopped manufacturing in that, in that geography. And we've also taken hand sanitization pipeline out. When I say pipeline, this does not include the total sales which we did. It includes a, a number of which, which would have gone in into pipeline. Like for any FMCG company, when you launch a new product, there is a pipeline impact which is there. For, for us, this was an important big category which we launched, and there is a pipeline impact which is there. So 12.8% growth, double-digit growth. And on growth, I am equally delighted, and as a matter of fact, very happy to share with you our India standalone growth. Uh, having had the chance to look at a few numbers which have come of some of the leading FMCG companies that have announced their results, I can share with you our numbers. So our India standalone reported number is 17.3% revenue growth. This does not include our acquisition on CSPL. So our actual growth in India in quarter one, uh, uh, le uh, uh, le leading uh, to 32.5%, with CSPL acquisition built into it. So we've delivered a 32.5% growth, both organic and inorganic, uh, and 17.3% revenue growth. So 
on india stand alone whatever numbers i've seen are growth are, are better than anything which has been reported up until now the second thing which i want to share with you which is something which we had talked to you last quarter is we've also delivered sequential margin expansion of 66 pps incidentally uh, most of the numbers which i have seen which have come in for india uh, i think the impact of supply chain and supply disruption is being felt by almost every company especially in the fmcg space and i've seen that many people have had challenges with margin both year on year and quarter on quarter in that backdrop a 66 66 bps sequential margin expansion is something we are very satisfied with we with and with these two i want to once again reiterate we stay committed to double digit revenue growth which is what we've been talking about uh, year on year and at the same time we stay committed to delivering sequential margin expansion uh, quarter on quarter from quarter 4 onwards in in this year this is a tough year indeed how have we managed to achieve it we will talk about it in great detail but one thing which i wanted to highlight to you is that we have taken price increases across the board so my colleagues in all the regions have been proactive in in taking price increases across the board uh, 90% of our portfolio now 90% plus of our portfolio actually has price increase which has already been agreed to we are also from a quarter one perspective i wanted to share with you that we are ahead of plan on our price increases so that is one big thing which is helping us as we go forward having said all of this i it would be amiss on my part if i did not talk to you about the unprecedented supply disruption challenges that we are also facing along with many of our of our come or with any anyway, many of our customers and other companies that you may have about so uh, we've managed to navigate these unprecedented supply chain uh, distur disturbances because i call them now disturbances because not only the raw material price is high not only is freight cost actually skyrocketing it is becoming difficult to be able to supply in certain cases so supply security being able to push out from one place to the other is becoming challenges challenging so just to give you a, a few anecdotal examples china to us container and we used to be move a lot of uh, laminates from china to us to some of our and to some of our other geographies where a container would normally be available for $4000 we are currently struggling to find a container at even up, up if when we are willing to pay anywhere between 15 to $18000 so you can imagine it is four to five times the cost but despite that it is not easy to find containers even between even within asia between thailand and india the numbers have gone from $600 to $3000 almost a 5x increase so the impact of this is tremendous as a matter of fact that leads me to the final point i wanted to talk to you about in terms of the the key messages i wanted to give on q and fi 22 so the numbers you delivered we are very happy with but our intrinsic performance is better and the the reason i say that is that in this quarter we navigated three one offs which are basically uh, so you know we have our operations in colombia in the month of may uh, because of disturbances in the country our plant was shut down for entire month so we lost almost one month out of the three months of this quarter in one of our geographies in colombia and we also faced challenges challenges in the severe second covid wave in india and one of our leading customers actually had to shut down his plant for a longish period of time about 2 to 3 weeks and based on that let me share with you and and i i i genuinely believe this is a one off and hopefully will not repeat this this quarter is the very first time we also had to shut down one of our plant for 3 to 4 days because of this uh, this uh, this uh, this position and finally as i was telling to you telling you about supply um uh, you know the uh, maintaining supply security i think in the last 2 3 days of the quarter as the quarter was ending we were not able to ship out out of china into us some of the stocks which were supposed to go and if i was to if i was to take these three uh, uh, instances which i have given you they are one off and hopefully will not be repeating in future 
And they are also one-offs which were not anticipated at all from the point of view. We had anticipated increase in raw material prices. We had anticipated reasonable increase in freight. But I think some of those things were not anticipated. If I was to build this in as well, we've, we've actually lost at the bare minimum about 180 million INR in, in revenue. And that would have taken our revenue growth to uh, mid-teens, which in my opinion is the intrinsic performance of our business and is indeed very good performance. So lastly, this is also signified by our performance of month, June month, within the quarter because some of these one-offs which we saw were in, in, in April and May, and barring the China episode which I told you, our June performance is better than the full quarter performance on all key parameters. So we've delivered a very good quarter, but more importantly, we've delivered a June month which is better than the consolidated quarter numbers which you see. With that, let me share with you the financial highlights of the numbers as we have reported them. So revenue growth from operation is at 7.8%. Uh, as, as, as you know, we've delivered 7991 million in revenue, which is a 7.8% growth at the global level. And, 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 and India standalone, I told you that number is a robust, uh, you know, 17.3%. Uh, 17, uh, 17 uh, the pro forma revenue growth, as I told you, continues to be 12.8%. That number for India is actually a, a robust uh, a mid-20s number. So India operations have done very well. Amisa this time has again had a standout performance as a region. We've delivered about 29% growth there. Uh, our EBITDA has come nearly uh, equal to last year, so almost flat, with a margin at about 18.1% and margin expansion of 66 BPS sequentially over quarter four of FY21. Our PAT, actually reported number on PAT, which you will see, is 30.4%. But apple to apple comparison here, where, when I tell you pro forma on revenue, which is higher, I must also share with you that last year we had a one-off where we had impaired our Russia, some of the assets in Russia. If we take that into account, uh, our PAT has come in at, at about 1.1% adjusted, again, nearly flat. So I think uh, with this performance, with the cash which the big job is, this business continues to generate, our net debt over EBITDA ratio continues to improve. That is at about 0.4x now. Marginal improvement from even previous year, quarter one FI21, despite the acquisition which we announced in quarter four of FI21. So the, the acquisition which we announced and the borrowing which we did, despite that, the number over, um, is, is number is 2457. Um, INR million. Uh, it's, it's marginally lower than the number a year ago, and more importantly, the ratio is at about 0.4x. Because of the capital efficiency and, 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 and the prudent capital allocation which we are, which we are beginning to demonstrate quarter on quarter and year on year, our ROC now is at 20.7%. So this, uh, indeed, are the highlights. If I want to move on, um, uh, the Raw material prices, and talk to you a bit about raw material prices. So raw material prices, in our opinion, continue to remain high. They are a bit volatile, so they have come down from their peaks, but they are still quite high. And just to share with you a few examples of a couple of polymers. So LLDP quarter, uh, quarter 1 FY22 year-on-year -year growth, which is compared to quarter 1 FY21, is a 55% growth over last quarter. Even sequentially, when already uh, we talked about this and our polymer prices had started going up and were going up very sharply, even sequentially LNDP has grown at 16% over last quarter. So quarter 1 FY22 versus quarter 4 FY21. The same number for LME, um, aluminium, uh, is 61% year on year and 15% quarter on quarter. HDP is very similar at 52% year on year growth and 8%, uh, even 8% growth quarter on quarter. So this is something which we will need to navigate through the year. And, and, and I'm glad that we put together a very robust plan in the beginning of the year. And I'm happy to share with you the progress which has been made on this plan. The progress is indeed very heartening and, and I, I will share with you against all the three things which we talked about. So the first and foremost thing which we talked about was judicious price increase. 
So here, as I was telling you earlier as well, 90% of the portfolio has been covered. We are ahead of our plan. Uh, all these uh, price increases have been agreed. Uh, some of them have flown in quarter one. Some more will flow in into quarter two. And I think with the, uh, wherever these are uh, contractual, these pass-throughs will continue, although with a lag. So I think that's the piece which is there. So very good progress on price increase ahead of the plan, and that's why we've, 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 we've signaled it with a green traffic signal. The second important pillar to navigate a tough year like this is our Project Phoenix. And you heard uh, the management talk about Project Phoenix now for a couple of quarters, actually five to six quarters, year on year. So this, this is cost-saving initiative, and cost-saving is becoming part of our DNA, and there couldn't have been a better time to actually go all out to be able to do more of this. So as I share with you, we've got detailed projects, actually with very small projects to, to reasonably large projects, 350 plus projects that we are working on, clearly identified, uh, you know, target set, uh, teams ready, clear accountability. So we are making very good progress on this piece. We are also making progress on, on multi-year Phoenix projects, which I told you. So particularly I want to highlight here the in-house manufacturing of caps and closures. So, you know, we've we started doing work on this, and this is something which will deliver towards latter part of this year, but more importantly, a lot into next year. And you will see us doing a lot in this area. So, again, very, very strong progress on, on, on fee saving initiatives. Uh, we are confident of delivering a number which, is, which we have not done in the past. It is a substantially higher number than what we had even thought of, even in our, uh, in, even in our planning and in our budget estimates. And that is important for a year like this, because as I was sharing with you, the raw material prices continue to remain high, and, and this is a challenge which we will need to navigate. Not only do we have a problem, and not only do we have an issue with raw material prices, we now have challenges of, of cost going up on other fronts, whether it's freight and secondary packaging. So I think our cost saving initiatives are going to be very important. Lastly, uh, our, our next improvement is, is on plan. Uh, you will see some of the numbers across regions where personal care portfolio is holding or the growth has not been that high. I want to once again highlight to you that we know subcategory growth within these which are very heartening. We know that in the quarter one of last year, there is a hand sanitization pipeline sitting across geographies. And that's why the progress which we made on some of these as well is on target. And, and, and that's how we are, we are talking about this. So judicial price increases ahead of plan, a clear green, uh, productivity initiatives and cost, cost saving initiative, Project Phoenix ahead of plan and mix improvement on plan. This, and, and, and I, therefore, I'm not surprised and I'm happy to report to you that we've delivered sequential margin expansion of 66 BPS, which you will find many organizations finding very hard to deliver under these circumstances. And with our holistic margin improvement plan, we are, we are very confident that we will continue to deliver sequential margin expansion uh, quarter on quarter uh, through FY22. Continued focus on capital efficiency. Basically, our capex is, is always been prudent, but just to share with you the number for quarter one FY22, we, we, the capex stands at uh, 531 uh, million INR. I think we will continue to judiciously spend capital wherever it is needed for growth, wherever it is needed for innovation, wherever it is needed for us to pivot to sustainability, and that you will continue to see. Uh, and we talked about the point on reduction in net debt, and I think that's very heartening again. So if you look at Despite 1675 million of cash proceeds paid to creative acquisition, we've managed uh, our Q1 FY22 uh, net debt is at 2.457 billion or 2457 million INR, uh, already lower than the FY21, and therefore this uh, this is something which we are which is big, which is the, the the cash engine which we have at the in the organization will continue to deliver, and our ROC is improved at 20.7. We made uh, consistent progress across all our identified levers, and I am not deciding to go into each one of them for a, to keep this brief and to, to be able to answer your questions as we go forward, but I do want to talk about sustainability. Because sustainability is a very, very critical lever and something which we've made very good progress. So here I want to talk to you about uh, three key points 
first of all you may have picked up in 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 the media or otherwise that we are now forming sustainable sustainability partnerships with our key customers we talked about it about two or two of our global customers and we you will hear from us about other global customers and large indian players or chinese players or or even big local customers and that perfectly segues into one innovation which we've done with uh, an important local customer in europe and on a category where i'm i'm delighted that i'm sharing with you this is our, our platina success story on a brand called hella in europe so first and foremost it's a food brand so i think that the fact that we've been able to deliver a sustainable solution for a food brand i'm delighted secondly as you know ketchup is is uh, is not a easy easy product to handle you need to have so the customer was very clear that they require they 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 need a requirement of sustainability but at the same time we were aware and sustainable and, and the customer was aware that they needed very high oxygen barrier we were pack, packing a food material and top of that ketchup here which you know is not an easy material to handle and what i'm delighted to share with you is our innovation team our sales team in 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 europe and and all our business development teams have done an outstanding job to come together and to be able to deliver eps platina pro solution which allows hela to pack challenging material like ketchup in a safe and odorless way it gives them the barrier which is needed this technical breakthrough will open up many new things as we go forward so our confidence of continuing to build our competitive advantage on sustainability is growing with every quarter with every month and this also i want to share with you that we will this year alone in fy22 and i still believe believe journey has just begun we will be delivering on our sustainable portfolio almost a 4x jump over previous month previous period fy21 and in fy21 we just started but in fy22 please that the journey is just started but our volumes in on sustainable portfolio will be at least 4x as we go forward we continue to 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 be socially responsible and our journey on esg has begun and and the work which we are doing on corporate social responsibility is heartening and we will you will see more being done we are fully conscious of our responsibility in covid times and in this period again we partnered with akshay patra to be able to give fa family happiness kits these are this is dry ration to to families in and around our plants where we operate with that let me sign off with the key messages and once again for fy22 and and and, and on quarter 1 so first and foremost we continue to remain committed to deliver double digit revenue growth uh you know and 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 for the second consecutive year and and year after year from now our pipeline has become robust the quarter one fy22 pipeline growth has been better than any quarter one or any quarter growth in in the past which we've seen so with very strong wins particularly in beauty and cosmetics with some of the global majors uh which we which we see here so our pipeline continues to strengthen continues to give us the confidence that our volumes will grow and we will deliver double digit revenue growth in fy22 our quarter on quarter improvement on a beta margin i spoke about a lot on this but just to reiterate that we stay committed to on this journey 90% of the portfolio already covered for price increase ahead of our plans and i think we need all of this and more because i think the challenges on 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 the raw material front and now on freight front are equally uh, equally strong cost productivity initiatives we talked about the projects which have been agreed and i think mix improvement journey you will see a impact of this moving forward in quarter 2 quarter 3 even more i think has has strongly begun sustainability i i believe is a key driver for our for our for our business and and we continue to lead the way in the industry here i just talked to you about the partnerships i talked to you about innovation on hela and i spoke to you about how we are talking of multiples of growth when it comes to volume and sustainability we are confident of delivering at least 4x in this year with all of this we are very confident and committed to delivering market leading revenue growth uh, which is double digit growth as we've defined and we will continue to do this in capital efficient consistent way one thing i do want to uh, share with you which i'm sure many other leaders may have severe covid wave 3 and the volatility on raw material prices 
and, and the continued freight uh, uh, prices remain a concern. Having said that, at EPL, we are confident of navigating it. We have done it very successfully in quarter one, and then we are confident of maintaining this rhythm as we go through this year. So this is unprecedented times. It's a tough year. COVID has not gone away. Along with it has come huge challenges on, on raw material inflation, freight inflation, supply security. But we are confident as a company to be able to navigate this well. And, and with that, I want to thank you all for patiently listening to me. And we are open, uh, me and my team are now open to questions. Thank you once again, and we'll be happy to take the questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ashwini Agarwal from Ashmore Investment Management. Please go ahead. Um, hi, good evening, Sudanshu and team. Uh, congratulations on a very good set of numbers and very, very trying uh, environment. So two or three uh, questions here. One is, you know, I was a little puzzled by the change in mix in favor of uh, oral uh, and, you know, against uh, some of the Asian cosmetics and beauty products. And I was also a little uh, worried about the U.S., where uh, I would have expected to see stronger growth considering most of the U.S. did open up during the quarter under review. So that's one question. And second is, uh, you know, you guys have done a marvelous job on sustainability, and I really applaud all the effort you guys have put in. But could you also help us understand how does the, these partnerships on sustainability, how do they feed through to long-term profitability? I mean, do the R&D and material costs offset whatever higher realizations are there, or is there uh, a meaningful contribution difference on the sustainability products? would be great if I could get uh, your comments on these. Thank you. Thanks, Ashwini, and thank you for uh, being generous with you on this thing. We are very happy with the performance. So let me first share with you um, the thing on Jora. So two things are happening here. Um, uh, you know, you will see these as we go forward. First thing which is happening in Europe is, if you remember last time I had said that we won an oral contract with a global major which is the contract which has started from April onwards. So in a way, we, we are happy about that, um, you know, um, because, because we have, that allows us to balance our portfolio better. And we now have two large global oral majors whom we work with in Europe, so this with this, the new edition. So that is one thing which is happening and which you are seeing this in this quarter. But the reason it's got a bit accentuated, and you are absolutely right that you were surprised to see beauty and cosmetics coming down a little bit, on further two counts, I think in the base, in personal care, what is sitting is, when we say personal care in our context, as you all know now, it is beauty and cosmetics, pharma, and everything else, actually everything outside of oral care. So I think last year, Europe had taken a lot of lead in uh, hand sanitization as well. So therefore, there is a lot of hand sanitization sitting here in the base. So I think that's one other thing. The second thing is that the uh, our Russia manufacturing operations were also largely everything outside of oral. So I think that operations we've discontinued. We believe in the long term that's the right decision we've taken, and we will see margin impact of it in the long term as we go forward. So I think, you know, so that has also come into play here. So that explains your, I think, as the year progresses, you will begin to see uh, beauty and cosmetics coming in uh, uh, again into Europe. Uh, I think there has been some, so therefore that demand picking up. You will also see some of the new contracts which we have won in, in, in Europe also playing out towards uh, definitely the second half of the year and that will start beginning. And, and, and fortunately, we've won a lot of our new wins are in beauty and cosmetics with two of the global majors. So I think that's, that's the Europe piece. That also, uh, on the US, 
see what you are seeing is America here. So I think, uh, and let me break this down into into three. I think one, if you look at Colombia, there's a big setback. It was what you know, off, uh, you know, not being able to do almost for one one full uh, a month there. Our Colombia portfolio, incidentally, is also very strongly skewed towards beauty and cosmetics. So I think that has two impacts. Not only were we not able to sell, but we weren't able to sell what what would have been uh, you know stronger from the personal care point of view. I'm happy to share that Mexico growths are good. Mexico is doing really well, which is part of the numbers which I hear. And, and US, you are absolutely right, uh, is coming back. And I think you will begin to see a lot of those in, in, in this quarter and quarter onwards. So I think even last quarter, we've delivered about uh, an overall growth in America of about 9%. Uh, but I think this will continue to gain in momentum as we go forward because the macros in US are strong and I think some of this impact, particularly with the summer this time, some of the travel now coming back, which we saw only towards the end of the quarter, I think will begin to take shape. So that's on Americas um, and I think your point on US macro is absolutely right. We are equally bullish. We are actually, as a matter of fact, installing additional machinery to be able to cater to that demand. And I, I was, you know, so therefore, uh, so U.S. remains strong, and you will see that as we go forward. And and I think Europe, I, I spoke to you on sustainability very quickly. I think the way I will address this is sustainability will give us a competitive advantage and continues to give us competitive advantage. Now, the adva one of the things which comes is, and I just mentioned to you in context of Europe, that we've won two uh, uh, contracts in beauty and cosmetics, uh, you know, uh, with two, two global majors. Uh, and I think one of the key drivers there has been sustainability. So I think sustainability, therefore, will continue to improve our share of wallet. Will, con will allow us to continue to upsell uh, to our existing oral customers and to that extent when we get that beauty and cosmetics on, on, along, uh, on, the, on sustainability and, and get that from some of our competitors, I think that is going to improve uh, the margin and mix. And in certain cases, I've always maintained, we will get a pricing advantage. We are not likely to get pricing premium on every case. But I think we will definitely gain share of wallet. We will gain um, additional categories or upselling, as I'm saying, and, and, in, and in some cases, uh, you know, premium. Thank you. Um, thanks. I had one small follow-up question there. Uh, so, for example, the Columbia plant being shut down was probably unanticipated by you, but a lot of your products, your end products, are essentials in many sense. Uh, do your contracts uh, incorporate a failure to supply penalty? How do you deal with that? Did you airlift material from other geographies? Did that have any bearing on your margins for the quarter? Uh, so I will I will briefly answer this, and I'll leave uh, I'll ask Ram to comment on it also in some more detail for you. But I think uh, you know this was a one month disruption. So I think we have we've been able to carry forward some of it into uh, we will deliver in June and thereafter. But overall supply disruption, your question on being sort of airlifting some raw materials to be able to make in some one place versus the other is something which we have, which we have to now anticipate and we are beginning to do. But on the contract front and a little bit more detail, let me pass it on to Ram. Ram, over to you. Colombia, primarily, the entire country is closed. Right? It's not only we are closed. So that way the demand of... Um, has not gone away. The demand in the course of time, everybody's supply chain is stressed. So everybody is building up like we building up. So going forward, those will see a larger portion of it recovering in the coming months. So that will happen. But there are disruptions in raw material supplies because of one month entire supply chain was disturbed. That we are trying to see how to airlift materials because most of those material goes from China to there and or India to there. So we are trying to export those materials. Uh, mostly Colombia is a retail business and most, more so in beauty and cosmetics and pharma. Oral care is a very small market there. So those products are, will bounce back. Okay. Uh, thank you. And Sulanshu, if I don't come back in the queue, uh, wish you the very best. Uh, in your future endeavors, uh, all the best. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants, please limit your question to two per participant. If you have a follow-up question, you may rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Jain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you and uh, uh, good evening, everybody. Couple of questions from my side. Uh, first, on the volume growth, uh, considering that uh, we had such a sharp uh, inflation in the raw material, and our revenue growth at 7.8 percent. If we are just for the creative uh, acquisition, probably is uh, lower. How has been the volume trajectory for us? Uh, it looks like it has significantly declined for us. Uh, and when we talk about a double-digit revenue growth uh, and uh, with the inflation for the raw material uh, on a YOI basis for all of them is upwards of 50%, it looks like the situation may not normalize sooner and it will be more gradual. That means for the full year, we are again looking at a significant decline in the volume for the EPL. How should we think about the uh, volume growth for the EPL in FY22 and uh, for the Q1 particularly? That's my first question. I will ask the follow-up question first. Yeah, so let me um, share with you on the volume piece. So I think the assumption that volume trajectory is, uh, or volume is declining is incorrect. As a matter of fact, we have seen one of the most robust volume growth in quarter one, and we continue to remain committed to a strong volume growth through the year. So the, re the, the, the reason you are seeing a 7.8% value growth and, and you, are, you are assuming there is price in it, which is absolute current assumption, correct assumption, uh, but the volume is, it's not that volume is not there because in our case, there is also a play of mix. And just to explain to you, if you look at my comparable quarter last, quarter, last year, I think that quarter had very, had lower oral because India was shut down for almost uh, one and a half months, all of April for sure. Travel tubes were very, were very adversely affected in, in Europe and US, which are, which are beginning to come back now. So for, and, and in, we compensated a lot of that through the opening up of hand sanitization tubes and a sharp V-shaped recovery in China, where the China recovery also had a lot of personal care uh, built in into it. So I think this quarter now, as you see, one, my pipeline has gone. That's why I'm trying to tell you that. So therefore, there is an adverse mix impact. So I think between my pricing and mix, there is a play. We don't, unfortunately, share these numbers, and therefore, I will not be able to share exact numbers with you. But I can tell you, and I am I'm telling you with confidence, with our numbers, our volume growth in quarter one is better than in many quarters we've seen, and our volume growth in FY22 will be one of the best volume growth we've seen in many years. So I would allay that fear of you or yours totally. And that volume growth gives us the confidence that we will deliver strong double-digit growth in FY22. Fair, fair enough. Uh, now this Russia impact, uh, the previously when we spoke about it, we said that we will be able to meet those supplies through the other manufacturing plants in Europe. Uh, where are we in the plan? Are we setting up the supply chain and hence we are looking at an adjusted growth rate for Russia and how much time we would uh, see before reaching the uh, previous levels of supply in Russia? This is a good question. So let me let me try and explain the Russia, uh, and I think we talked about it briefly in one of our earlier calls, but let me spend a couple of minutes because that's important. See, when we looked at our portfolio, and we keep doing this from time to time, you know, our plants and our portfolio, and particularly Europe in our journey of improvement of margin, one of the things which we realized that rationalization of manufacturing and basically shutting down manufacturing operations in Russia is going to be long-term beneficial to us for from the margin point of view. So I think that is something which we stay committed and you will see that, that impact coming in, 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 in this year itself and fullness of time. Uh, I think in terms of being able to supply to uh, the key customers, I think we are going to look at them as long-term uh, strategic customers where we are building up additional capacity in our Poland plant and you will see basically us being able to service those. And then, then there were some tactical customers where 
we will decide whether we service them out of Poland, does it make sense for them, or we do not service them. I think those are the calls which we will take as we go forward, depending on how we want to margin maximize our, our Europe geography. Because one thing you are aware we stay committed to in the medium term is to drive up the ma margin and the profitability of Europe business. Uh, so I think, you know, so that's how, so, so to answer your question, are we gearing up to supply to strategic places and, and do we have plans in place? Yes. And then there are a few customers whom, with whom we have the pipeline discussion as well as following this. Some of the people whom we already had, are we be able to su supply from there? The answer is yes. But are we rationalizing our operations in uh, Russia? The answer is yes. That's why we have shut down our manufacturing plant there. So I think, you know, so therefore, and, and that impact in this quarter is, is significant for us to call out. I think as it goes forward, I think this will be an impact which may not be that significant. Got it. Uh, thanks, Sudhanshu, for that answer. Just one last question. More of a... I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Jain. May I request you to please rejoin the queue? We have participants waiting for the Fair enough. Thank you. Thanks, Sudhanshu, and uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir, Samir Gupta from IISL. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, so I have, I have two questions and I'll probably ask them together just in case there is some interlinkage. So uh, first on the MSR portion, even adjusted for acquisition, I look at the revenue run rate in absolute million rupees is still better than 4Q. Now, in a COVID-impacted quarter, India, we know that uh, May was uh, a, a lot impacted here. So what exactly is driving such a good uh, top-line performance in uh, India or AMESA? And in US, our EBIT margin uh, has uh, seen a very sharp decline. And uh, I understand that there is a lower personal care contribution. And one of the customers is moving production from Colombia to Asia. So uh, is that the only thing or is there something else in this margin decline? And also uh, this Columbia, Columbia to Asia movement, are we servicing that customer from Asia? Yeah, so uh, let me um, uh, take up both the questions. So first, uh, Samir, first, uh, thank you for uh, highlighting our India top line performance. Uh, Deepak is sitting with me. Uh, you know, uh, you are also complimenting him and his team. I can see him smiling as you share that comment. So thank you. I think indeed we've done very well. Uh, I think the reason you see this is something which we've been talking to you for a couple of quarters now. I think the lot of the work which we have done in last year in FY21, and of course it's continuing, but the work which we've done in last year in Amisa. I think is highly commendable on particularly opening up of pharma. So I think there is a lot of growth which you will continue to see with our addition of pharma customers. Opening up of entirely or building a new category, I think which is, which is in a very interesting, a local, a local innovation where we are converting a lot of Mendy cones into um, you know, tubes. I think just to give you one illustration of that, but working with flares, I think India team, along with our China team, to be fair, but India team working with a lot of startups with very, very strong responsive time, with what we call new emerging brands. So I think it is share of wallet gain, it is competitive gain, um, and I think you are now beginning to see those results. You saw a robust performance in quarter four, and relatively, both these quarters, the competitors have been weak, so the numbers look very, very strong. But I think relatively speaking, compared to other companies and others, I think our performance is very good. It was true for quarter four. It is true for uh, quarter one or of, of FI22. And I'm confident that in year of FI22 and then moving forward, Amisa would have turned a new leaf. And I think you will see um, Amisa delivering strong growth as we go forward. So a lot of competitive gains, a lot of share of wallet gains, some sustainability gains here as well, which you will see, and therefore our sustainability portfolio coming into play, and we will talk about it. On the EBIT margins in US, I think the US, the, some of the challenges continue to remain, and I must be absolutely upfront with you, particularly in US. I think uh, the challenges which we've spoken about earlier, so very briefly, you know, touching about them again, I think our ability to get people onto, into the factories ability to get them to you know, continue to work when we hire them, continue to retain them, um, especially at the, at the starting level. And so I think that's where we have the challenge. 
because of a very peculiar circumstance in US at the moment, uh, you know, you are aware it is not true only for us, it is true for many companies. I think uh, with, with the current, um, uh, you know, program of the US government, uh, and, and I think the, uh, the, 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 the uh, help which they are getting from the US government, uh, the, there is a huge pressure on industry in terms of uh, manpower. But what we are all confident of is, I believe this is going to uh, last and will we'll sort of, uh, you know, uh, anniversary out in September, I think, so which is just a couple of months from now. And hopefully that will bring back people back into factories, back into workplaces. And I think with the vaccination drive which U.S. has taken, that will make it further, uh, uh, will, will make it even better. So I think the, the point I'm making is that U.S., what you are seeing is, Again, I would request a somewhat one-off you because these are costs which we are incurring disproportionately higher because of COVID. Okay? And I think uh, as you will see in, in quarter two of this year and, and, and from there onwards, I think we will build, build on these EBIT margins and build them back very quickly to where U.S. used to be. So I think, you know, so therefore I wouldn't worry about U.S. margins at all. Uh, got it, sir. I'll, I'll come back in the queue uh, uh, for any follow-ups. Uh, if I am not able to, best of luck, sir, for your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Trilok from Aditya Bella Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening uh, to everybody. Uh, I just uh, wanted to you know, tell, uh, kind of get more of some clarity on European operations. So we understand, obviously, you know, that Russia plant is what is what is, has been shut down by the company. But uh, you know, uh, could you sort of supply it from you know other plants? Uh, I mean, I'm just curious to understand more in detail why would that why would why would should a, you know a plant decision have an operation impact on the business to, the, to this extent? Yeah, so I, I explained uh, Trilok to, uh, I think, uh, one of your colleagues earlier, Sanjay, I think, in that context. See, uh, Europe operations and, and, and the Russia decision has uh, both uh, immediate term and a medium term implication for us. So I think in the medium term, I think the reason we've looked at that operations is because that was not, from a margin perspective, uh, long term viable for us. We were of the, and, and we stay committed to, uh, you know, improving Europe margins in the in the medium term and, and, and taking them to high high teams. Uh, I think in that context we have taken that decision. And I think by definition, when we've shut down the plant there, we are rationalizing our our, our Russian business. So the where we need to supply, we will supply. Where we need to perhaps supply and, and build maybe even pipeline for the future, we will do that. We are building capacity, as I told you in that earlier one in Poland. But I think we do have a near term or an immediate term impact, and that's what we've highlighted here. So uh, is it fair to conclude that the you know the the reported number in European region is primarily because of that particular plant? Yes, so I think uh, it's fair to assume two things in case of Europe, and I said that and I want to reiterate. I think one is because of Russia, which is basically, you're absolutely right. And I think the second is also, uh, like many other geographies, but even in Europe, and maybe Europe a little bit more than other geographies, our hand sanitization uh, category building work, which was done, was brilliant last year. So I think, therefore, that is also in the base. And I think because, because of that pipeline also, there is an impact which you are seeing um, in, in this quarter, but I think moving ahead, you will basically, so uh, these two will begin to come down and you will see uh, European uh, numbers uh, continuing to grow because what I'm confident of is that in Europe as well, and I spoke about it, I think, in, in my opening remarks, we have won uh, beauty and cosmetic uh, orders uh, with two global majors. Now, these will start I think playing out, they will, they will play out towards uh, second half of this year. So I think that impact will also begin to come in. Um, and, and, and I think we will continue to gain uh, more and more competitively, both share a wallet with existing customers and also new customers. So that work will happen. And, and, and then therefore, from a, from a share of wallet perspective and our competitive position in the market, we are very satisfied with where we are in Europe. Okay, got it. Thank you and wish you good luck for your future endeavors. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Suman Kumar from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Uh, can you talk about uh, the creative style of performance? And it is, uh, I think, included in Amisha. So can you segregate the, the extra creative uh, style of this thing, Amisha? So uh, I think uh, one broadly on the creative performance, we are very happy with the uh, with the progress which we made in the first full quarter of our uh, of the acquisition. I think we've, we've seen very robust growth in creative, and I'm here talking creative growth quarter on quarter. So very robust top line growth, strong EBITDA growth. I think the uh, and and the work done by the creative team along with the along with our team in Amisa on pricing is again commendable. So I think, you know, uh, both on both sides of their portfolio, the co-excluded plastic portfolio and laminate portfolio, they have made uh, very good progress. I think on, uh, on the Amisa numbers, I, uh, we uh, do have the numbers here. The Amisa growth is 28.5% uh, with creative. And I think if I was to, uh, to look at, uh, you know, organic comparable growth, that number will be in very high teens. So I think, you know, it's a high teens growth uh, without, uh, without uh, so on a comparable basis, we have to look at organic uh, with, 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 without creative. So I think, you know, that's the way it is. Um, and, and overall creative uh, performance is good. Their growth are far superior to the growth which you are seeing for the MISA region. So as we said, revenue growth accredited, their EBITDA growths are far superior, their margins are superior. So from the hypothesis which we went in with on, on growth, a bit, revenue growth accredited, EBITDA growth accredited, and, and margin accredited, I think uh, this acquisition is playing out to our, to our plan. Integration is progressing very well, and, 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 and we will, we will be, uh, you will hear more from us on this as we go forward. And the flight moved from the Colombia to Asia. So will we get a uh, business for in Asia from that time? Can you repeat the question? I, I lost the question. Can, can you just say the question? The, the, the flight moved from the uh, Colombia to Asia. So will we will we get a uh, business from this flight in Asia immediately? Uh, uh, yeah, we keep looking at it. We don't comment on individual uh, clients, but yes, you are absolutely right. I think between our uh, EAP business and this, so I think you know. Um, uh, there are there are places where when these businesses move, our our other regions uh, clearly uh, clearly benefit. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet Kumar from the Library. Please go ahead. Mr. Sudanshu, you were very enthusiastic and energetic in terms of presentation, and so were the numbers of profitability, etc., which gives us a lot of confidence in EPN. That's point number one. I have a small question that our return on net worth TTM 12 months would be 12.5, which is very, not very happy to be about. That's one. Number two, if you see uh, maybe 12 quarters, things have been jumping up or going up. And India continues to be a high cost uh, country in terms of capital. I would like to bring your attention to that. Whatever you want to reply, I feel very happy investing in EPA. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your confidence in EPA. Uh, I think I just wanted to share with you that as a consolidated, so as EPL global and at consolidated level, we continue to evaluate our cost of capital. And I think, you know, Amit, Amit is sitting here. He manages our tre treasury really well. So I think we continue to look at how do we manage the uh, cost of capital at which we borrow, how do we borrow and how do we maximize some of these things as we go forward. I can assure you as a concept that this is, you know, the, 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 the rate of interest at which we borrow from across the world, what is the weighted average uh, interest uh, uh, for our, this thing, how are we utilizing our capital in different geographies and how are we optimizing it and maximizing it as we go forward is top of our agenda. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't follow some of the numbers you spoke about and maybe we can take them offline and under, so that you know our finance team can understand better from you. But I can tell you capital efficiency and consistent capital efficiency is at the heart of what we do. And I can assure you that our team is doing a very good job on this. 
So I think we can, you can perhaps take it offline with our finance team. And thank you once again in your, uh, in your confidence in EPL. It's a, it's a great company. It will continue to grow and, 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 and go from one and, and, and go from one height to the other. So therefore, continue to grow as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddhan Kanodia from Ratnamani Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Sir, I have a couple of questions. First, sir, how many days of raw material or inventory do we maintain? So, uh, Parag, would you address that? Uh, the number of days of uh, inventory which we maintain. So, uh, the ideal inventory would be in the region of about uh, 45 to 50 days. Uh, these are difficult times in terms of uh, the supply chain disruptions that we are seeing. Uh, so we would uh, uh, build a bit of safety stock there uh, until uh, these challenges in supply uh, disruption are uh, completely abated. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, and the second question will be, what will be our uh, utilization levels? So we, we do not give out utilization levels. Uh, suffice to say that uh, we have always invested and we continue to invest capex for the growth of the business. Uh, uh, we've said this many times that uh, you will see capex expenditures grow in time, uh, but uh, we do this in a prudent fashion. So uh, again, um, to repeat, we don't need to build greenfield plants uh, and we are able to uh, grow our business with adequate cash flow for capex. Okay. Okay. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shivaji Mehta from an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for this opportunity. Uh, I had just one question. Uh, this is regarding uh, the recent acquisition of Pyramal Glass at Stone. Um, and now that Pyramal Glass is a part of, uh, you know, the portfolio company of Blackstone, uh, is there any synergy uh, you know, that we could get from this? Uh, just if you could share some thoughts on that. So we are, you're talking to the EPL management, maybe the audience, uh, maybe the people whom you sort of, so I think uh, Blackstone invests in different organized, in different companies from time to time. We always explore wherever there are synergies. I think in case of Pyramid Glass, it is very early for me to comment, but conceptually, uh, we, we always explore synergies uh, wherever we can. Um, and I think at an appropriate moment, if we have something more to share with you, we will. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as this was the last question for today, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Richita. Um, uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, on the call. Thank you for, uh, once again for your, uh, you know, your energy and your enthusiasm and your, your confidence in EPL. Um, and I want to share with you that we've begun FY22 very well uh, in an extremely tough uh, time uh, with some unprecedented supply, supply security and supply chain issues. Um, we've done very well. We, along with the management, are confident of sharing this and navigating it really well as we go forward. Uh, EPL is a great company. On a personal level, I want to thank all of you for your support for this organization. I also want to tell you that I'm moving on. For personal reasons, I've, endo I've enjoyed the uh, 17, 18 months which I've had with this organization. They've been short, but they have been very, very uh, enriching um, challenging and, and enjoyable personally for me. Thank you for your support to the organization. Thank you for your support uh, to me and thank you for all your good wishes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. On behalf of Systematic Institutional Equities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.